see that awareness. Um, we've got a couple of snippets of guidance up here. The FDA and their pre and post market guidance says that you will have a cybersecurity should should have a cybersecurity program. Strong should. Strong should. You should have a product security, a cybersecurity framework, uh, and you should have an incident response team. Those are the big things associated with FDA. And then finally, uh, you guys have already seen again the, the cybersecurity message from this year's hands. Um, this is the key focus area, and so that's why we wanted to make this a feature uh, presentation on here. On here. So we've got some cybersecurity trends up here. How many of these um, really hit home with you guys in your specific situation? You guys relate to legacy devices, can you relate to authentication issues, data backup and recovery? It's almost like we're seeing the same laundry list, right? How many folks still have XP devices in your, in your footprint? That's a common, common thing, right? So we've got a lot of these legacy devices out there that are not secure. Um, most of them are not designed to be secure, to be updated in the first place. Um, and actually being able to, to stop the cyber hijack for these devices and take care of them um, is, is a day-to-day, hour-to-hour challenge. Of course, we request to move things from the environment, but legacy the devices are still a top risk in our healthcare infrastructure. Let's talk a little bit about innovation and integrity. Mike, I know this is a kind of sweet spot for you guys. We talk about some of the challenges I've seen in what you guys are doing to take a look at it, solving some of those issues. Yeah, so um, unfortunately, uh, lack of authentication, I would say, is widespread in the industry. When we're talking about authentication, and not, uh, I would say end to end authentication, that's everything from the user to the back end systems, making sure that messages that are going to the system device are properly authenticated. And how do you put in place checks to make sure that a message that's being received by a device is coming from a trusted source? Authentication helps you do that. It's, it's one way that you can help the the lack of that, somebody, of course, can go in and send a message. The device will accept that message and execute what the command is and can take control of your device. There's a lot of bad scenarios that can play out with that. So authentication is something that is absolutely needed with any type of connected device. Uh, authentication of users is also a good uh, that's a challenge with legacy devices and some of the systems that are out there where these uh, devices have uh, you know, panels where users can go up and control the device. If you don't have the ability to properly authenticate a user into a device, that's another risk. It's a big risk that uh, needs to be taken seriously. Integrity is important with everything uh, that we do. And, uh, if I ask the question of integrity, what is that to you guys? What does that mean? Joe, I'm going to put you on the spot. What does integrity mean? It just means it is what it is, right? And so in healthcare, you can imagine the bad ramifications if you don't have integrity with your data. How are doctors able to make the right decision for your patients? Integrity is essential with medical device, whether it's the way your device is operating, or whether it's the data that's coming out of your device, so that you can make sure that you're getting this. And we see a complete lack. There's a, there, there's a great gap in the industry in both of those areas, lack of authentication, a lot of the Vulnerabilities that have been disclosed recently and have been uh, publicized have been lack of authentication, lack of authentication. And I, that's, that's good, and I think in, in our case, uh, I think we had this conversation before. PKI is an often overlooked, very simple solution, and it just works. Right? I, yeah, I, mean, I think there's a rebirth there. Yeah, I, I say to people, you know, PKI is the solution people turn to when they're ready to make mature decisions. And they, it's also a solution, unfortunately, a lot of people turn to when they've tried everything else and it's fit or that go back. A lot of the mature industries that deal with, dealt with cyber have used PKI as one of the backbones of the security. So it is a great, it's a proven solution. It's not a good solution. It's, well. it's, it's something that's worth it. Good. Thank you. Yep. Security monitoring and being compliance. Part of the challenge there, of course, is knowing what you have in the first place and what you're trying to protect. Identifying those assets, making sure you have a solid inventory, and monitoring those devices, generating some sort of action information in its security posture. Justin, I know this is a sweet spot for you. What do you think? That's right, absolutely. Thank you. And we can talk about authentication, we can talk about patch management, we can talk about software, SDLC, we can talk about vulnerability management, but you know what? 
you don't know what you've got, you can't protect it. And a lot of the hospitals that we work with are struggling with, you know, security 101 problems, such as what devices are connected to my network right now. So we focus, for starters, on that problem. Uh, there are a lot of scanning technologies out there today that do address this, but what we have in healthcare is a set of proprietary technologies for the most part that enterprise scanners are not suitable for. We've got legacy devices that are very, very vulnerable and brittle, uh, and they speak protocols like HL7, ASTM, DICOM, all this stuff that's unique to healthcare that's not necessarily deployed elsewhere in, say, a large financial institution. So. We've got to be very careful when it comes to asset management as to how we come at the problem. There's a lot of manual inventory systems out there today that are very expensive for hospitals to, to maintain. So we're focused on automation specific to healthcare. How can we safely manage our inventory and how can we fill that gap, if you will, when it comes to all these proprietary technologies? And we've, we've built a, a platform that addresses this in a passive way. We have a passive scanner that speaks these proprietary protocols. We partner with manufacturers such as BD to um, help hospitals understand these fundamental problems. What's connected to my network? What state is it in? Does it need to be addressed? Is there some operating system or firmware that's out of date here? And how do I tackle that problem? Security 101 problems, uh, but you can't go to the next level of identity and access management, authentication, patch management, um, until you've understood really what your exposure is for starters. So. Still some of the house, that's what we're talking about. Exactly, still some of the house, very well said. Well, yeah, I mean, everybody knows security 101 problems. You have the, the, the lag in the healthcare industry, like a lot of other industries that had to go through maturity, especially in the financial sector. You run into issues where uh, everybody's taking a reactive approach still. Uh, something happens, they try and play whack-a-mole, hit it with a hammer, re-image it, do something, pray to God it doesn't happen again. Um, what we're seeing is that, that transition from the reactive to the proactive approach, uh, especially in uh, anti-malware technologies. Uh, so Silence being one of the first, if not the first, actual major anti-malware vendor to apply artificial intelligence uh, to making decisions allowed us to go beyond the limitations of uh, updates, uh, issues with signatures, heuristics, uh, massively complicating the suite of tools you have on the endpoint. Why that matters is because it doesn't need to know something bad is bad before we are able to stop it. Uh, that matters for medical device manufacturers especially uh, because the associated ecosystem around the point of care device is almost always supported by an unpatchable 2008 server or an XP machine or an operator workstation that's on God knows what. Uh, and so having those uh, isolated technologies that don't require signature updates, that don't require the internet, don't require decision support, are where a lot of these uh, providers and HDFs need to be. Uh, and that, that allows you to secure not only your corporate infrastructure, but your clinical infrastructure. Uh, and that clinical infrastructure comprises you know, 60 to 70 percent of providers' dark network. So those are those are where we're focusing with anti-malware technologies, containing that, uh, being proactive, helping the organization uh, stop the ransomware, stop the pensions, stop uh, you know wanna cry and all these other issues. Uh, so I think as as you'll see, uh, time goes on. Almost every other major anti-malware, uh, anti-virus vendor now has some form of AI, uh, whether it be a decision support system, whether it be built in. And, and it's just impossible to be uh, competitive against those ransomware type technologies using the same That's So I, I, one thing that I wanted to touch on here, which, which I think is very important, is so, especially working with you guys, we're in the healthcare sector, we're, we're actually starting to have to be good at threat intelligence. Okay. Uh, so, you know, it's areas that five years ago we were like, you know, Oh yeah, I mean, 
which I is worth 10 times you know, financial data on the black market. Yeah, so oh, yeah. it's a massively lucrative oh, target, yeah. unfortunately. So, so, so like it or not, we're the hot item. So, yeah. One thing I want you to take away from this other than the gigs that you put our industry experts in is hopefully you're seeing the theme already, and that is that this is not a problem that's a challenge, I should say. This isn't a challenge or an objective that we're going to solve in a silo or by ourselves. No provider, no finger, there's no magic pill. What you should see here is, is that partnership and that integration of all these solutions and all these different capabilities is really the big one. But if not, proactively do it better in your hospital or within your organization, it's something you have to do.
this is generating data. How are you protecting that data? What are you doing to make sure not just the data that's in transit, but even if it's in process, or data that's being stored on the device, how are you handling that data? And are you thinking through the ways in which you're securing and protecting that? What about the integrity of the device? How do you know when your device turns on that it's operating in the right state? And you can do, you can do things in the design to make sure that when your device boots on, that the device is operating in the that provides additional layers of protection for patients. So those are the things I would say at a high level. Uh, retail is doing a great job. Retail is doing a great job. We've got elements up there, vulnerability scanning, uh, static code analysis, penetration testing on products, all of those which we do. We do guys are also life cycle. Once we develop a product, we are ready to drop it into the market. The vendor takes control of that product uh, or, or implements it in, in, inside their infrastructure. Now we've actually got to provide service and keep this thing updated. We've got to manage that asset. We've got to keep it patched. We've got to keep it updated. Justine, what are some of the things that we should be looking for when we're ready to do that type of thing? What should we be doing there as the best practice? Well, what you're doing is you're, you're taking the accountability for the ongoing health and quality of your product. And that's really the key. Whether it's your customer's responsibility to manage updates, whether it's the manufacturer's responsibility to manage updates, what we need to realize is that that is something that needs to be managed because something that is considered secure today will not be secure next month. There are hackers out there that are constantly looking at lucrative targets and discovering new ways to compromise these targets. Uh, so this is an ongoing process. This is not a deploy and walk away from the scenario. Um, I would like to say that security is a symptom or a reflection of quality. And um, when security is built in from the get-go, when we're considering all of these aspects to build in a product, that results in a quality product. So um, I'd really like to commend you again for leading the charge, basically, and creating a quality product by addressing all of this from the design stage. Uh, and then it goes, as I say, all the way through the implementation, the rollout, and then the maintenance from there. Um, stepping down into vulnerability management and incident response, um, antivirus is so it's sometimes viewed as a magic bullet, right? Uh, it is not a silver bullet, but yes, <laughs> it, it is sometimes viewed as a What should we be looking for uh, from an AV perspective? What should we be doing? Well, I mean, even the most effective technologies, you know, we, we pride ourselves on our 99.96% accuracy, our detection rates, all these things, but even stuff gets by us. It gets by the best technology, it gets by, you know, it, literally anything. That's why there's 15 different products in a suite, right? And so, you know, the big things you have to, to look at are how you approach incident response, how you approach vulnerability management, disclosure programs, uh, the things around the, the governance of the what if, right? Uh, and so by taking a, that, that approach and setting up your incident response retainers, uh, talking to the vendors who might be providing that, having more than one potential vendor to do IR uh, is a huge thing, right? Uh, different tactics, different techniques, different tools. Uh, and so going through there and understanding, do you need an IR guy for your corporate network, for your technology, your issues, or do you need an IR person for uh, going in and helping customers remediate, uh, remediate a potential issue with your technology? Uh, so there's uh, two big uh, hits and response uh, you know, areas you need to address uh, as a strategy. Uh, and then from a vulnerability management perspective, from a perspective much like Justin says, the, it changes the minute it hits the customer's network, right? So how you do your testing and vulnerability management and analysis in isolation through your secure development process, uh, it goes right out the window as soon as it's plugged into the corporate network because they might have stuff on there that's already resident. They might have malware that's already on their network, and that new node is now a potential juicy target, right? Uh, and so how you do that, how you manage that, how you do the analysis, what your standardized input and output process is, is extremely important. Um, and then on top of it, and you know, BD has, has been great with this about communicating with customers, helping integrate those technologies, is uh, on the provider side, understanding the residual risk transfer. So no matter how much technology and how great everything is, there's always elements of risk that are being moved to the patient side, to the provider side, from the 
I have a very comprehensive framework.